And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today I'm talking about a children's game from ThinkFun called Robot Turtles. Now, Robot Turtles was initially on Kickstarter. I remember it because it was a incredibly, it got national news, made a ton of money. I uh, had a lot of people backing it. And it was programming for children. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. I mean, I guess I'm a bit of a hypocrite there because as a teenager, I was always messing with programming. The idea of programming stuff just left me fascinated. I messed with basic so often. I thought the idea was really cool. Um, and Robot Turtles um, takes that and puts it into a box for kids. Now, I played this with my own kids, and I have kids from various ages. My uh, youngest, who can play games, is five. And my oldest is um, uh, 14, so a wide variety of ages, and I tried this with them. Let me tell you how it went. of the game. Each player is going to start with these turtle cards and they have this gold printing on them. It really makes them shiny and they're also going to be hunting down a jewel for their color. So that's also another shiny card that's placed on the board. Players actually have a third shiny card. This is a bug card that they'll put in front of them and basically they can tap it and say bug at any point to kind of get a do-over. In the basic game, players are going to start with these three move cards. You have a move forward card, you have a rotate to the right card, and this card, interestingly enough, shows the turtle moving towards the purple flower. The card is purple, and on the turtle itself, there's a purple flower there, so that when players can remember, that means turn right. And then they have another card you, that you can see here that does the same thing except turn left. So one person, probably a parent, is the turtle mover or an older child. And then each player in turn is going to pick one of their cards. So let's say um, the first player, they pick this. They play this card in front of them. And then the turtle mover does whatever the card says, making noises, you know, moves forward. Again, the child can tap the bug if they don't like what happened. Maybe they their next one, they pick this one and you go, I didn't want to make him go that way. Okay, well, that's fine then. Pick the way you want him to go. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get your turtle to go onto the, your jewel. And when you've done that, you'll have a whole pile of cards in front of you. Perhaps in this instance, it'd be a forward, 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 turn left, forward, forward, forward. Okay, maybe they've done it a different way. And everyone is a winner in a sense because everyone's trying to get to their, their jewel. Now, you can make the game more challenging. Obviously, this is pretty simple by adding obstacles on the board or unlockables, they're called. This is an ice wall that players cannot go through. And you can put ice walls around the board. Of course, you want to make it, the, the book has different setups. But players, you can then add another card to the game, which will melt an ice wall, turn it into a puddle, and then players can move through it. So that can be added to your uh, programming row. There's also stone walls that you can add. These are the same as ice walls, except nothing goes through them. And then there are crates. Crates are similar, but crates can be moved. So if I was here, I could push the crate over one. Um, you can't push them off the board, but crates can be moved around. And there's different setups and various things that you can do. You can also play a method where players, instead of putting out one card at a time, they have to put out their entire program. They put out their program, and then you run the program for them. You know, boom, 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 and see if they make it to their location or not. And then, there's, this, is, this is the most advanced part of the game. There are function frogs. Function frogs are, let's say for example, you want to see how short of a process you can do it in. So I can put these two cards as a function and say whenever I play this, that means go forward two. Or maybe move, go left, and move forward again. And now when I'm actually doing my complete program, I have the function over here, and then I run my program. Now this is more advanced, but it as the book says, it teaches some actual programming. And that's basically the game. There's different setups that you can do, obviously. Um, you can switch, and as, as the players learn more and more, you can make the board have more and more. I mean, the, the game comes 
with quite a few obstacles for you to move the turtles around in. Folks, I have to say here that this game was, uh, it was delightful. I have a five-year-old and a uh, six-year-old, and I also have a eight-year-old who has special needs. And her abilities are probably closer to a three- or four-year-old. And they got this. They, they, they understood it. I was sitting there watching them just think out. I mean, it's, oh, you know, there's so many games out there, you know, match the colors and count. And that's good stuff, okay? We teach kids that all the time. This taught them something they've never done before, and they picked it up like that because the game concepts were so simple. Oh, and they were sitting there going, oh, she's going to get there before me. Wow, they, 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 they were looking ahead. They were figuring things out. And I was just, when, when I saw my daughter with the special needs just figuring out the stuff, I was, wow. You know, that was just such a neat concept. The components for this game are top notch. I mean, they're good quality. That, that gold ink they use that just brightens everything up. I love the, the cards, they're so simple. They have piles of each, they can put them out there. Now, now be forewarned, this, um, separate function card that my little kids haven't gotten and I don't think they will, but the older ones got the concept of that and that gave them a challenge and to put out all the cards in a row. I, man, get this, okay? If you have kids at all, get this. Now it looks very um, youngish and, that, and it's true though. Uh, what does the box say for the age on here? Um, it says ages four and up. <laughs> yes, yes, that works, wow. And they liked it. They liked the turtle. They liked the concept. Everybody was getting there at the same time, trying to finish. You could make it competitive for older kids, but I. But just as a teaching program, oh, yeah. Okay, the hype is true. And I like when hype is true because that's a good thing. That means all those people who back the Kickstarter have gotten a good project. And it means that there's something here that I can, I can really uh, push. Um, so... Yes, this is for kids. This is um, adults will probably find this too simple, but as a teaching tool that is fun and entertaining, I, I cannot give this higher thumbs up. I mean, for myself, you know, I don't know what I'll rank this game as. Probably, um, I don't know, a six or seven. But for kids, this is a ten. A ten. Get it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Leave it open. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Boom.